please welcome the Executive Vice President of Morelli, Detlef Jurens. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, it's a real pleasure. This is my first online conference. I'm excited to speak to everyone here about can simulation and digital twin keep up with case? So it's more a question than a, than a technical presentation. Um, my name is Detla Fures. I'm heading up engineering and technology for Morelli. Um, who's Morelli? Um, Morelli is a, is a new company, actually not new company, a technology company that is over a hundred years old. Um, we're trying to lead technology in the fields of conventional powertrain, uh, interiors, thermal, automotive lighting, electric powertrain. And you can see we have a very, very long history also in motorsport. And I'll be talking about all these technologies and how all these technologies will help and need simulation and need combined simulation is what I want to talk about the next 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And I hope that will trigger some good dialogue going forward. So like I said, Mor Morelli is a global player. Um, we derive ourselves to innovation since many, many years. Um, it's a big company. It's a, a merger between the former Japanese Calzone Kasai and Magneti Morelli, the, the iconic Italian technology company. And, and both of them combined um, want to serve the global automotive industry, specifically with future technologies. And the, given the, the size and the diversity of the products, I'll talk about how these come together and how individual business units and individual technologies help each other. And um, I will go through a couple of um, simulation examples. Um, as you've probably already recognized, I'm, I'm not the simulation diehard expert, even though um, a couple of 30 years ago, I did program some finite elements uh, myself on, on plastics processing. But um, I, I think the, the challenges at hand are much broader. So I will not go into the deep dive of any one of these individual technologies, but I will talk about how, even despite the, the very broad product portfolio, and this is just representing many other tier ones and technology players that are out there and, and try to cope with what case really means for this industry. And if you don't, if you know case under ACES or, or any other um, strategic input, I am talking about the biggest change within the automotive industry in terms of connectivity, autonomous or supported driving, shared mobility. And for us, probably um, the most driving change is the whole electrification topic, which I think everybody now really sees. Um, starting with, with connected, of course, this is, uh, this is a true connectivity story here. But, um, the, the theme here is if you look at these mega trends and if you look how the industry reacts to these mega trends and how we all need more and more of connected technology. Let me just talk to it for, for a little bit. If you just think that um, connectivity is all about um, the 5G modem, um, no, it's, it's much more. It's of course not only connecting the vehicle to the grid, but also collecting all the data and, and enabling additional businesses. And, and I'll be talking about what that means for simulation in a minute or electrification. Electrification is, is as much about connectivity as it is about simulating the battery cell and the chemistry inside the battery cell. Why is that? There, there, there will be no true connectivity, no true electrification without the consumer being um, knowledgeable about when and how and where he can charge his batteries again on his car. So, and, and what does that have to do with autonomous? Uh, obviously, there are systems that 
do want to support the driver even in electrification. And uh, of course, the whole shared mobility topic is probably more a business model. But even that one, um, is there really going to be shared mobility going forward uh, without electrification and without even uh, certain portions of autonomous? Probably not, or it's at least a significant enabler. So all these technologies are intercommingled, all these enabling technologies. And I'll be going one step deeper now. This is 50,000 feet. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means for the individual business units and the individual products and how they are enabled by simulation. Um, I, I guess there will be many other speakers that will talk about um, will there be prototype free engineering um, and, and how can simulation really help streamlining efficiency and engineering? Um, I, I think the industry has been preaching that for many, many years. And I'm also a big fan of that discussion. I truly believe that they, we can reduce significantly the development time frame by using much more simulation. And then, um, which is the final stage of this presentation, I, I will talk about how can that be optimized when we really go into a digital twin with a feedback loop from, I call it reality, and really doing automated optimization. Um, and, and that's kind of the, the dream that, that we're having here and today. So let's just deep dive into it. And I'm, I'm more than happy, obviously, to um, later on have questions on individual programs or projects or, or the whole theory about how can different simulations really help each other. Um, if I just flip to probably um, the, the traditional good old powertrain, which, by the way, is, is one of the cornerstones of Magneti Morelli and therefore the new Morelli, uh, being in that business for, for over um, half a century, um, also here already. Um, we started out with the good old structural, um, the, the good old structural uh, finite element analysis, which is kind of the cornerstone of, of simulation, at least for um, a mechanical engineer like myself. Um, and that now already, even in, I'll just say it, a simple product, like a powertrain product, would already be enhanced by simulating magnetic flow. And, and, and of course, there is no real powertrain, uh, wet side or hot side and, and, and others without fluid dynamics. So already, um, a simple injector, um, is, is talking and needing, um, two, three, and if you're even talking thermal, four different simulation tools and methods that at the end of the day, um, also are interwined. So already here in, in the first example, um, I'm setting the stage for, for really teeing off to the simulation industry, the need for truly combined simulation tools that, that would not single dimensionally, but four, five, six, and, and we'll be finishing up this presentation with um, an e-powertrain example where we would be talking 12, 14 different simulation tools that are all working on the same thing, um, optimizing the entire system. Um, if I go to another example, in interiors, and, and obviously um, we can just talk probably already forever just on simulating what we all need to do on the interior side. Um, and I'm not even discussing very, very important things like uh, product safety and, and simulating crash and simulating airbags going out. Um, today, just a simple one, just uh, keeping people thermally comfortable in, inside of the car. So starting with a simple um, fluid dynamic simulation around how the vents and how the airflow would uh, would be part of the whole overall comfort feeling of, of an occupant. And of course, that will also already drive because it's very subjective, uh, the feeling of comfort inside of a car. So already that is the first indication of we need data from real live day-to-day -day, um, 
and and I'm not already talking like a a, a real um, a real quality loop and big data analytics. I'm just talking about the fact that um, simulation is much more than than just a single dimension. And um, combining thermal devices, combining hardwired technology with something as subjective as feeling comfortable um, is something that that uh, we will see more and more. And, and obviously automotive being so customer focused and end consumer focused is the prime example of how the need for taking simulation out of the engineers and, and, and software development box into, into reality. A another good example um, is, is the whole thermal discussion. And this is a, a tee off page and um, we're very proud of that. And, and Kalsana Kasai being the, the Japanese arm of Morelli grew up with thermal. They're, they're a hundred year old radiator company and, and grew up with thermal. Um, and obviously doing thermal simulation is all about um, fluids. It's all about heat exchange. It, it's all about mechanical. And um, I'll just chose this example to already tee off the later discussion about the system of an e electronic uh, electric powertrain. So this is a battery cooling plate example here. And um, I think a lot of uh, you will be talking about battery battery systems from the simulation perspective. Um, but this is just the first dimension um, to keep these cells thermally uh, safe and sound. Everybody knows from, from their personal phones how important it is that the batteries are always comfortable from a temperature perspective. So, so this is a huge example already of an enabling technology for a broader system optimization. So to get the, the thermal elements right later on for an electric powertrain discussion, will be fundamental. Um, if, I, if I look at um, also again the, 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 uh, the combination of, uh, of different simulation tools and methods and, and needs, um, our exhaust business, which is called green technology systems, um, is dependent on not only managing uh, thermal energy, but, but managing gases, managing fluids, managing um, mechanical vibrations, even simulating sound to, to get also there um, the perceived comfort and convenience um, of, of the driver, or in this case, the um, ones listening to the car. So already now all of a sudden sound engineering is combined with thermal energy management and thermal simulation. So who would have thought about things like that in, in the past? And, and I can go through and then I, I, uh, we can go through um, other great examples like on our shock absorber business where now also all of a sudden fluid dynamics, mechanical engineering, thermal engineering, just the behavior of the oils and the fluids and, and um, the magnetic systems as a function of durability and, and thermal energy um, already tells you a little bit of the story that there is no singular um, simulation. And when you then even assume that the whole simulation of manufacturing um, gets plugged on top of that, meaning can I even make that, um, which is then probably the next simulation. And, and this is the example of automotive lighting. And um, here, this is probably a prime example. Who would have thought of that? Um, it's not all about simulating on, on how the light beams go. That's probably the easiest one but simulating how a mold flow um, inside of an injection molding tool would change the dynamics, the, um, the lighting dynamics of the lens. Um, and that in combination with what happens if um, these things get warm or cold or are in use, and then understanding what that does structurally to your entire system, like a safety critical system, like the lighting system, um, really tells you that now all of a sudden the next, next dimension comes in. So we already talked about simple things like mechanical and fluid um, simulation. We talked about things now like manufacturing simulation. How does that work? 
and, and then adding in other things that would make every simulant's life easy or actually hard. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to create challenges for our engineers. Um, not going into details on the electronic side, it's just mentioning the same story, multiple dimensions. Um, so we, we talked about very mechanical things. We, we talked about thermal. We, we talked about um, uh, even customer perception, um, subjective simulation. And, and now we're getting the whole uh, electrons in there as well. Um, what are they doing under the influence of thermal? What are they doing um, when the going gets tough? So, and I haven't even talked about um, IT uh, software simulation at that point in time, but obviously when it comes to electronics, then that one is the next dimension. So uh, obviously in, in, in this conference, there's there's a whole section about simulating software and, and what that does, um, all the way to artificial intelligence and, and other great themes. But all I want to kick off here is um, trying to create an understanding in the technology teams that, that we have to much more look at, at combined systems. And kind of finishing off with um, the story about electric powertrain. And not only because it's the major theme um, of the, or one of the four major themes of auto industry, it is also a major theme for Morelli. And if you just think about what I just said the last uh, 15 minutes here, um, probably electric powertrain is the, the most complicated combination of all the simulation tools that are needed. Fluid, thermal, simulation of, of software systems, electronics, uh, mechanical, uh, even simulating um, the whole connectivity part all at once. And, and then we, we, we did as Morelli a, a, a great optimization on that. So not only do we now have or are working on the ability to simulate an entire system with um, all these multiple dimension of simulation tools. Um, we did a study here with an Italian university on now running optimization loops. And, and this was actually a study done on the Formula E uh, motor. And, and the Formula E motor is, is only a one dimensional um, optimization. It's all about performance. Um, but if you now think about a uh, real consumer life um, electric vehicle, there is all of a sudden multiple dimensions of optimization, not only in terms of performance, but durability, uh, reliability, and, and even little things like how does this thing sound? Um, and, and does it still sound great or does it sound at all? Um, and, and, and when is it breaking down and reliability and so on and so forth? So. Talking about e-powertrain is an example of what I would really like to tee off this, this conference and then obviously broader discussions within the um, simulation community. How can we get to a fully integrated, automatically um, optimized system approach for an e-powertrain, combining all these simulation tools that, that usually won't run on, on one simulation software and, and won't even run on uh, one single server environment and, and won't even be able to use the same kind of CAD data or, or same kind of software codes in, in the beginning. So I, I really want to leave um, this community then with closing out how would that then now really loop into a true digital twin, meaning not only simulating all these multiple dimensions of an electric powertrain in this example, but how would we now feed back all the information from day-to-day -day use, the use cases of all these hundreds and thousands of um, electric vehicle drivers out there um, on, on even their use patterns, on what they feel is comfortable, how really the quality data of um, the battery, the electric motor, the, the inverters um, is coming back. So not only simulating once, which is already complex, like um, I kind of we alluded to in the multiple dimensions, but now optimizing with real life data 
really creating a true digital twin. So um, with that, I'll really like to tee off this, this uh, great simulation work world conference by, by asking the question, are we really ready for this? Are we ready for case to combine multiple dimension of simulations, um, adding real life data, connecting simulations with um, automation, um, with, with optimization and doing that automatically? So I'm absolutely excited to hear more and a big thank you for listening in and everyone just stay safe. Thank you very much.